But Roger Stone joins me now. And, Roger, everything is just crazy right now. I, I, I can barely maintain a level head. I don't know how President Trump is doing it. Well, first of all, uh, let me say, Owen, that you're looking very sharp today, very sharp indeed. Your certified Richard M. Nixon style American flag lapel pin uh, and a solid Donald Trumpian almost tie. Uh, solid choices all the way around. Uh, this is why, of course, you were chosen uh, last year as one of Mr. Stone's international best dressed people on my best and worst dressed list, which comes out every New Year's. Well, it's crunch uh, it's time, Roger. It's crunch time. I got to get some brownie points here before the list comes out. Uh, there, there is no question. Now, President uh, Trump, as you know, was elected on a platform of draining the swamp. Uh, and I can't think of a more avaricious uh, long-term swamp creature than Congressman John Conyers. Conyers was the Al Green of his day. He was the first man to introduce articles of impeachment against President Richard M. Nixon. Uh, that this 88-year-old machine politician uh, should now be accused of sexual harassment and forced to retire uh, should be cause for celebration. Unfortunately, however, because of the way the system works, his son, Ian, a state senator who is getting uh, uh, living the privileged life upon a different set of taxpayers, uh, will now not only aspire, but easily win this seat in a depressed urban district where there are no jobs uh, and the streets are unsafe uh, and there is an oppressed, uh, uh, you know, uh, underpopulation. So uh, the machine carries on. Uh, the swamp doesn't get cleaned. It shows the cronyism and the base corruption of the Democratic Party. Well, and I don't know if you saw the stories, but his son was also a attempted rapper. He attempted, I guess he had a short stint as a rapper or, or something. And he would write lyrics about how his dad was a pimp, how his dad was a player, um, you know, how he basically had all these privileges because of his powerful father. And then he puts out a tweet bragging about how his father was sleeping with married women in extramarital affairs. Of course, this is all with the background of John Conyers' wife, uh, 20 plus years younger than he, spent three years in jail for her own federal bribery case or illegal bribery case. So, I mean, it's amazing that Conyers tries to act like you know, high and mighty moral superior when when he's he's garbage, he's been trashed out of the swamp, but then he gives it to his swamp creature's son and, and acts like this is some sort of dignified action. Uh, somewhere Richard Nixon is smiling down from heaven. Uh, look, it's about time. This guy is, uh, is, is symptomatic of the crony uh, ism of the old Democratic Party. The party is now reduced to being uh, uh, a dwindling number of uh, uh, of minorities and people of color, because even they are starting to vote uh, Republican. Uh, Donald Trump performing much stronger among African Americans and uh, uh, Latinos than Mitt Romney. Uh, but that plus labor plus the trial attorneys uh, and then the white super wealthy liberal elite, that is the Democratic Party. It is no longer the party of working men and women, the party of anti-communism as exemplified by Harry Truman and John F. Kennedy. No, it's a left-wing party of elites. Uh, look at their lineup for president. It's Kamala Harris? Really? Really? Please. Well, it's amazing, too, because as you were just noting, a lot of these former Democrats, you know, uh, minorities that the Democrats love to virtue signal to are kind of coming over to the conservative side or, or voted for Trump. And I think that it's reached a point where the Democrat constituency is saying, hey, look, you can't just virtue signal to us all day. You can't just say that you're for minorities or say that you're for this or that. We want some results. Where are the results? We've been electing you for decades on these policies. You say you're standing up for minorities. What are you delivering? There's been no deliverance. So I think Trump's message with the, the, the basically the formula is Trump's message, Democrat failures equals these people are now coming uh, to, to vote for Trump or to vote conservative. Uh, look, there's no question. Um, uh, earlier today, uh, I spoke on the Alex Jones show about the determination of the 
globalists and the two party duopoly that have run the country into the ditch to remove Donald Trump and the extraordinary peril that this presidency is in. Uh, I am absolutely convinced the president's uh, attorneys uh, with the acquiescence or perhaps even the direction of General Kelly and the palace guard, uh, including H.R. McMaster, who we just stunningly learned, approved surveillance on the man himself. So uh, what kind of treachery is that? Uh, This cabal aided by the Matahari of this crew, uh, Dina Habib Powell, intend to railroad our president out of office uh, in a Mueller takedown. On the other side, I will lay it all out for you. All right, we're about to go to break. You're going to hear it all from Roger Stone. Donald Trump gets elected to drain the swamp. He's trying to get it done, but the swamp is so entrenched, they're fighting back. This is where we're at right now. This is the war for America. You won't hear that anywhere else but Infowars.com. Stay tuned. More from Roger Stone on the other side. That's Al Green uh, in his extraordinary hit. Uh, love and happiness, not to be confused with the Al Green, the congressman who uh, just, uh, as an outlier, uh, introduced articles of impeachment against our president. Uh, it is uh, uh, extraordinary that we are at, at a point in which I think the presidency is imperiled uh, by this palace cabal. Uh, think of him uh, as the good hearted king. Uh, who is surrounded by a group of knights who pledge their loyalty, but secretly plot to take him out. The part of Al Haig in this drama, the general who essentially ended the Nixon presidency and walked the president towards his ultimate resignation, uh, is played by uh, General John Kelly. Uh, The Wall Street Journal reported only days ago that the president was holding meetings in the private residence at night with various uh, people in his administration, uh, unbeknownst or without the uh, uh, the, uh, notice of General Kelly. This comports with what I know of Donald Trump. He uh, chafes at being controlled uh, or having, uh, uh, you know, uh, unfettered ability to do his thing. Uh, whether it be Twitter or uh, whatever else. Now, it is interesting that the president's anti-Islamic videos, which Owen, I know you really liked, uh, and his uh, attack on Joe Scarborough, uh, whose jealousy uh, is just extraordinary. I think people need to know the backstory here. Congressman Matt Gates has said in a tweet that Joe Scarborough, his predecessor in Congress, told him throughout his career that he would be president. The truth is, uh, he is bitterly jealous of Donald Trump. Uh, he aspired to run for president himself. He still does. Uh, when Trump was nominated uh, at a time that Joe and Mika, and I ask you to freeze frame uh, her, her face, Uh, while he's talking in the video. If you want to see a look of sheer Ava Braun style hate. Uh, But uh, it is uh, uh, is extraordinary that Joe thought that he should be vice president. I kid you not, this man uh, dreamed of a Trump Scarborough ticket, uh, which was never realistic or in the cards, but that did not stop Joe Scarborough from uh, golfing at Mar-a-Lago, dining on Donald's lobster, and uh, uh, and uh, 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 swilling Donald Trump's uh, uh, alcohol in the bar. Well, it sounds to me, listening to you break this down, Psycho Joe. I mean, Psycho Joe really fits. I didn't realize that this man was that crazy. I thought he was just another fake news nitwit shill. But no, I mean, he really is like mentally deranged. Well, I'm told that he uh, is a party animal, at least he was before he decided to make an honest woman of uh, of Mika. Uh, but uh, look, Mika and Joe sucked up to Donald Trump like nothing you've ever seen. We know that the uh, McMaster number two, the, uh, the other um, neocon that has 
uh, affected and taken over the Trump NSA uh, came uh, from uh, uh, this would be uh, uh, Dina Powell, Dina Habib Powell, was recommended for the job by Mika. Mika got her the job. That shows you how tight uh, they were with the Trumps. Uh, and then Joe has had this mental breakdown about the fact that he's not president and that Donald Trump is. They're, they're, they're grifters. They they drank Donald's whiskey, they ate his food, they played at his course, they rode on his plane, they sucked up to him, they brown-nosed him, and then they have now turned on them because Joe Scarborough is not going to be president. Yeah, it's just amazing the hubris that Joe Scarborough has to think that he should just be given the vice presidency for no reason. Well, and if one were to examine Joe Scarborough's uh, voting record, uh, not in the House, but as a, a registered voter, you would find two astonishing things. First of all, there is his period as a registered Democrat. Uh, and then after he becomes a Republican, uh, he's not very responsible about voting on Election Day. So, uh, you know, Joe Scarborough, I think, is exposed uh, as a wannabe a guy who's bitterly jealous of the president, but he has emerged as a kingpin uh, in this uh, all out push, which is kind of plan B for the establishment. Make no mistake about it, I'm not keeping a, a written vote sheet in my pocket where I'm calculating and vote counting the Trump cabinet in the 25th Amendment takedown. Uh, I have absolutely uh, uh, been able to confirm that a high level aide to Vice President Pence has been a constant leak of uh, Russia uh, facts to the media that are designed to embarrass General Flynn uh, and the president. Uh, I know that at least for some period of time after uh, the Billy Bush tape leaked and things looked bleak for the Trump campaign, uh, that the presidential candidate, Trump called the vice presidential candidate, Pence, who would not take his call. And Pence sent a message that he didn't want to talk to him right now. He wanted to assess the situation. He was calculating his odds uh, uh, to take the nomination. He had been importuned by a group of uh, concerned Republicans who were certain that Trump was headed for a colossal crash that included Reince Priebus and Paul Ryan and others. Uh, and he, he showed interest at that time, which leads me to believe that he could be seduced into the 25th Amendment plot, uh, but he cannot afford to be caught actively participating. How much of a factor, on top of everything else that we know of and the swamp and the corruption and the real Russian collusion, but how much of a factor is jealousy from people the likes of a Joe Scarborough or a Jeb Bush or just bitterness from people the likes of Hillary Clinton who thinks that she should have just been handed this election. How much of a factor is that just people being jealous that Donald Trump, such a real man, can just go from not being in politics to being the president of the United States? Uh, well, uh, oh, and let me say this. Uh, it's not quite uh, five o'clock here in the east, but it's almost time for a martini. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to have to do with lemon and water in a Marco Rubio moment. All right. Try not to spill that all over yourself like little Marco. And then um, I'm sure that you already took your brain force, though. So that's why you, you didn't need to take your brain force now. Well, uh, and my ears are not sweating, as you can see. If you have not seen that colossal uh, film, Art of the Insult, with uh, Joel Gilbert, which I think we premiered here last week, and that line is in there. It's hysterical. And what a terrific Christmas gift that is. But folks, do your Christmas shopping at the Infowars.com store. We need to expand our palatial new New York Bureau, which you're seeing tonight for the first time. That's Roger Stone. I'm Owen Schroyer. Infowarsstore.com is how you support us. We'll be right back with more of The War Room. Welcome back. I'm Roger Stone, uh, and you're right here uh, on at the War Room. This is our new New York Bureau of InfoWars. 
uh, and where we'll be broadcasting uh, from time to time. Uh, soon there'll be even more programming. Uh, we're now at 10 hours a day. If you uh, support the expansion of InfoWars as mapped out by Alex Jones, uh, if you're liking the War Room, then I really encourage you to go to the InfoWars.com store. Uh, it's Christmas uh, and uh, there are great discounts on t-shirts, uh, books. If you do not own the Making of the President 2016 by Roger Stone, it is the definitive account of how Donald Trump pulled off the greatest political upset in the cent of the century and the essential role that Infowars played in his rise. Uh, we can also grab the anti-fascist, uh, anti-communist t-shirts, uh, a very hot item. Uh, but these make great, great uh, First Amendment oriented uh, Christmas gifts. Uh, there it is, the making of the president. This is uh, at a great price at 19.95, and you get the inside skinny on how Donald Trump overcame extraordinary odds uh, to take on uh, the entrenched two-party machine that has drive, driven the country into the ground uh, and uh, how stunned the mainstream media and the political establishment was by his upset victory, laying the seeds for what Owen and I are talking about right now, the takedown of our president one way or another. Well, it's not working, Roger. Al, or, um, excuse me, Al Green, not the great musician, but Al Green, the terrible politician, tries to get a vote of impeachment today on the floor, gets his vote, goes terribly wrong, and loses big time. And I think that that kind of shows... It's really, Roger, I think a analogy to what's going on in America where all the Democrats and all the Trump haters are the loudest and they're screaming the loudest and they're making the most noise. But when it comes down to where the rubber meets the road, they're outnumbered, they're outvoted, and they're really just losers. Well, uh, look, the president's lawyers are being naive about the threat that the Mueller investigation poses to the president himself. Uh, General Flynn uh, has uh, been thrown over the side most unceremoniously. Uh, as we reported here exclusively at InfoWars, the mainstream media reports that the president's lawyers had, uh, that the Flynn had uh, chopped off the president's lawyers, and it was on Flynn's initiative that their uh, legal cooperation ended. That was false. The president's lawyers broke with Flynn. In fact, that was the last straw. The general had been holding out against any guilty plea in this set up case where he was essentially uh, entrapped. They illegally surveilled the general. Uh, there, I can find no FISA or federal court warrant to justify it. Uh, and uh, there was no Flynn uh, uh, defection. Uh, even our friend Buchanan bought that mainstream lie. Flynn was abandoned. Flynn was left to twist slowly in the wind. If they might steal a phrase from Watergate. Uh, and it was the last straw, the general, already uh, in financial straits with Mueller threatening to uh, implicate and indict one of his children, threw in the towel. Uh, uh, then the president uh, or whoever, his lawyers that we are told, compound this era with a, a tweet, a stunning tweet that essentially uh, uh, admits that he knew about uh, the fact that uh, that Flynn had lied and that that is why he fired him, inconsistent with what he said previously and setting himself up for a potential obstruction charge. One of the president's lawyers dived on that grenade and said that he had sent it, not the president. I think that's bizarre, to say the least. Yeah, and the whole thing is really just getting more bizarre and, and more bizarre where Flynn admits to lying to the FBI, which is already a misnomer to me because I think he was trapped. As you say, it was an entrapment process. And in fact, Flynn wouldn't be charged with lying to the FBI 
if this farce of an investigation was never happening. If this none investigation, this fake investigation was never happening, Flynn would have never been charged with lying to the FBI because he would have never talked to him. Yet even though this has nothing to do with Russian collusion, nothing to do with government corruption, really nothing to do with anything, the election, anything, the left still celebrates this like, oh, look, they charged Flynn. Woohoo, we got something here. But it's nothing. I mean, how do you make it this where the left is celebrating a fake investigation and then it admit to lying to the FBI that really doesn't even matter? It's important that people understand this, Owen. It's a setup. They uh, surveil Flynn. That's how they learn of his overtures to the, uh, the Russian ambassador. And then, as in the case of Paul Manafort, as we have exclusively reported here at InfoWars, they have an early morning raid of his office, and he's there. No advance warning, not two agents showing badges, but a whole strike force. Uh, and he's genial. He agrees to talk to them without a lawyer, and they already know the answer to the question. It's a setup. But the underlying activities for which Flynn is lying are perfectly legal which is why this is perplexing. Why uh, did Flynn also evidently lie to the vice president? Conjecture, whoever told General Flynn to make this call, whether it was the president or his son-in-law, Jared Kushner, probably admonished the general to tell no one on the orders of the president. Flynn is a chain of command guy. Now I admit that this is conjecture. But there's no other way to figure out why a non-political military man would lie for the sake of politics. He wouldn't. Uh, and to understand his mind, this is after the election. It's after he's the designated uh, NSA coordinator. Uh, and the underlying activities, the outreach is perfectly legal. Contrast that with James Clapper. He lies to the US Congress under oath about the uh, claiming there is no metadata collection a program. Edward Snowden proves otherwise, yet he pays no penalty, Owen. He walks. Uh, liberals have no problem with that. That kind of perjury is evidently acceptable. Yeah, and I say the same thing with James Comey. James Comey comes out and says that a Trump tweet motivates him to write down notes, but then you look at the timetable and you discover that that formula doesn't add up based on the timing of the tweets and the alleged notes that Comey allegedly took that he magically never produced. But this is what we're dealing with, Roger. I mean, that's what I'm saying. That was why I opened the first segment with you by saying, I mean, I can't, I'm running out of patience with these people. Every time Hillary Clinton walks free, I'm losing patience. I mean, I can't even imagine what Trump is going. I mean, he must have the, the patience of, a tortoise or something. I mean, this is just insane. Plus, I don't know what it is with all these guys, uh, these deep staters with the shaved heads. Do you notice that? I mean, uh, yeah, the it Mr. doesn't Clean matter look. whether it's- You know, I've had, someone, I've had someone float the idea to me that they all do that. It may have actually been someone here, I don't remember, that they all shave their heads like that so that they don't leave a trace of DNA where they go. Uh, it's Hayden, Brennan, uh, uh, Clapper, uh, Elizabeth Master, uh, they all have shaved heads. You see, I think this was Flynn's problem. He didn't fit in because he he refused to shave his head. The ju judge general uh, is a real patriot. And he was never part of their global. Welcome back. You're at the war room, uh, and I'm your host, Roger Stone, with my colleague in Texas, Owen Schroyer, uh, who is uh, once again bucking for the best dressed list. Uh, for next year. You know, this is a custom that I picked up from uh, the late Mr. Blackwell, who was a, a Hollywood uh, designer and uh, arbiter of fashion, who wrote a syndicated column. And he could make or break your career as a young athlete or young socialite or a titan of business or a movie star. Uh, but he could also be extremely withering in his criticism. Uh, so examples of some of my worst dressed uh, 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 decisions would be uh, my good friend, Jesse Ventura, uh, Michael Moore, terrible, just terrible. Uh, uh, but Owen Schroyer, there he is. 
uh, a, a, a winner last year. So uh, I try to look across the world at, at the best dressed uh, men and women uh, from all walks of life. It's not a political list. Uh, liberals like Ted Kennedy have appeared on this list. Ted Kennedy had a button down Ivy League style favored by his brothers, Jack and Bobby, that is uh, very all American. So uh, this is a non-political product uh, and uh, the Daily Caller has graciously carried it for uh, a number of years, uh, as has the New York Post. Now, now is the time if people want to recommend somebody for the list I ought to take a look at. Uh, you don't have to be famous or uh, or connected to be extraordinarily well dressed. Uh, so uh, you could be a party operative and end up on this list. Uh, or you could be a uh, Trump supporter. Uh, on the other hand, I'm always open to those who say, God, this guy is a slob uh, in the Michael Moore tradition. I will tell you this, uh, if uh, the uh, 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 gentleman who thinks he's going to challenge uh, the president uh, thinks he's going to do it wearing only a hoodie and jeans. Uh, he's wrong about that. Well, I've got to do what I can here in the final final month of the Stone on Swank best dress list. I'm not sure. Has Rachel Maddow ever cracked the worst dress list? Uh, I believe she has had a star turn there. You can go to stoneonstyle.com. Stoneonstyle.com is where this is uh, posted and you can also get other tips and resources. I recently wrote a book, uh, a piece on the trench coat, for example, and why every gentleman uh, should own one. So uh, again, no politics here on the style site. We're trying to help the young gentlemen uh, navigate how to look good because one of Stoll's, Stone's most important rules is look good, feel good. Uh, if you go to the gallery, you can see some of the absolutely best dressed men and women over the last century, uh, something that I curate myself very carefully. Uh, so uh, it is, uh, uh, it, it's a lot of fun and uh, I've met a lot of great dandies. A dandy is someone who cares about this. There's a handful of them. Uh, some of them are not even self-admitted dandies, like uh, James Rosen of Fox News, always well turned out. Josh Mankiewicz of NBC, uh, impeccable taste. Uh, uh, there, there. This is not a large fraternity, but there are many uh, gents on it. Yeah, okay, get me a trench coat. Yeah, I need a trench coat immediately. Uh, I'd like to nominate uh, I'd like to nominate Rachel Maddow this year because many times she and maybe it was intentional. I, I don't really know, uh, but she went on air many times and and looked like a, a lumberjack. Like she literally looked like she just got done chopping wood and you know, uh, trying to get syrup up in the uh, Canadian forest. So I don't know if that was an intentional look. didn't really vibe uh, with whatever she was there you go. or she just goes with the straight up. I'm a dude look. That's the I'm a dude look from Rachel Maddow. There's the I'm trying to figure out how to think look from Rachel Maddow. Hey, but all kidding aside, Roger, you actually are very entertaining. People, if you think that you're just going to read this and get some tips and pointers and, and commentary on fashion, there's actually quite a bit of humor in there as well that I appreciated. For example, when he writes his piece on Chunk Yogurt or Chent Kyuger from the Young Turks. Oh man, that had me rolling when uh, when you were uh, excoriating his terrible fashion taste. So it's definitely a great piece that uh, I would suggest people check out. <clears throat> uh, well, uh, you know, uh, it is a, it's a great joy uh, to write, um, and uh, you know, I'm already starting to look at um, uh, this year's lineup. We have some strong recommendations, but you can go to uh, stone at stonezone.com, stone at stonezone.com, which we've set up to take your recommendations for best dressed and worst dressed. Now, uh, don't email at me 40 times. Send me your very best recommendations because uh, the polls are, in essence, now open. 
I always like to find people uh, from different walks of life who maybe aren't famous, but have a great personal sense of style. You don't have to be rich and famous to be on this list, but um, you have to be consistent. I think that's the key. Uh, uh, you know, I'm looking for people who are elegantly dressed. That does not have to mean expensive. Uh, in my younger days, I would uh, scan the thrift shops and uh, and then later eBay looking for custom made clothing that had been uh, put on the market, uh, made for someone else in excellent condition uh, or traditional uh, pieces uh, of uh, Harris Tweed and so on. Uh, and I still commend that to people who want to build the basic wardrobe. You need a navy blue blazer. You need a brown or gray Harris tweed jacket. You need several pairs of quality khaki trousers. Bill's khakis, which you can find online, are the very best. And you need to wash them until they achieve a certain buttery softness that's comfortable. Uh, some rep strike ties, uh, the very best button down shirts, Kamakura in New York and Tokyo, or uh, J Press or Brooks Brothers all make certainly fine renditions. Every young man uh, who is starting out needs these things. A solid blue suit, a solid gray suit, uh, a muted but not particularly uh, strong stripe. What I'm wearing is probably, uh, it's called a beaded stripe, probably too much for the average uh, political consultant. But with those foundations uh, and skillfully matching them with jeans and a black turtleneck sweater or a Rob Dew hat, as they are known, a, back, a backwards Kangol style cap, any young gentleman can get by in this world. Roger, I'm just curious if you've ever considered adding a new category or perhaps inserting a couple men that popped up on the political scene here in the last couple months. That is a chicken man, a man that showed up in a chicken outfit to protest Trump and our friend the unicorn. He showed up multiple times. There's the unicorn and the chicken man, Roger. I mean, do they get any consideration? Best dressed, worst dressed, exotic well, dressed? this reminds me of the fact that we now know, thanks to WikiLeaks, that Hillary Clinton personally approved and directed the operation to have someone dressed up as a duck, Donald Duck to be specific, show up at a Trump rally uh, in order to foster discard. That's called a dirty trick. Hillary Clinton was directly involved in a campaign dirty trick. Isn't that what they brought Richard Nixon down for? Uh, e gods. Uh, but uh, the original chicken uh, uh, gambit uh, only works essentially when someone is ducking a debate, not when they're ducking tax returns. Uh, but it is a classic that has been used again and again. It's a little... Um, it's even a little hackneyed at this point. Yeah, and we didn't need a special counsel to discover the dirty tricks uh, via Hillary Clinton and Robert Kramer at the DNC. Nope, that was Project Veritas, the patriots over there that did that for us. So just incredible that we learned that about Hillary Clinton and how dirty the DNC is. They rigged the elections, yet they still want to come after Trump. But the good news is Jim Jordan today uh, did his rounds on different media outlets saying that it's time to have a special counsel into Hillary Clinton. Roger, final 30 seconds. Are we getting anywhere closer to that? Uh, I should say this, uh, uh, Owen, tomorrow on The War Room, California uh, attorney and activist Tyler Nixon and California hemp advocate uh, uh, Patrick Moore. All right, then. We look forward to that tomorrow. So be sure to tune in to The War Room tomorrow where Roger Stone will have those great guests. Don't go anywhere. This is The War Room. We'll be right back.